Hi guys, Amber here. Welcome back to In Conversation with ATF. Now my guest today is a guest who I've wanted on my show for a very long time and I've succeeded in getting her at last. You may know her from <laughs> such shows such as Where on Earth is Carmen San Diego, where she voiced Ivy. She was uh, Felicia Hardy, Black Cat in Spider Man 94, Mallory McMallard in Mighty Ducks, the animated series, Miss Keen in Powerpuff Girls, Gladys, Billy's mom in Grim Adventures of Billy and Mandy and Grim and Evil, uh, Sam and Mandy in Totally Spies, the OG Totally Spies, uh, Detective Selma Restale in Gotham Girls. Uh, Martha Little and Miss Little in the Stuart Little animated series. Ramona, Zatanna, Poison Ivy, Ice and Killer Frost in Batman Brave and the Bold. Wendy in G.I. Joe Renegades and Jean Grey in X-Men 97. And also shows such as Swap Cats, The Tick, Black Mice from Mars, Johnny Bravo, Pinky in the Brain, Superman the Animated Series, Texas Laboratory, Batman Beyond, Fillmore, Ben 10, Avatar, Generator Rex. And she's also uh, Thorn for the Scooby-Doo franchise, Cinderella for the Disney uh, Princess franchise. And I'm just looking through all these and I'm just thinking, oh my gosh. And also <laughs> Princess Aurora and Catwoman, Metal Gear Solid, Mortal Kombat 1 that's coming out soon. There's way too many, there's way too much stuff I have on my notes. My guest is Jennifer Hale. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you so much, Amber. Hey, hi everybody. Happy to be here. <laughs> oh my gosh. Well, as you could probably tell from me reading all this, you've done a lot. And you're also a Guinness World Record holder. So I am very proud to be talking to you right now. Thank you. It's I'm I'm proud, proud and happy to be here. Thank you. You're welcome. And also a BAFTA nominee as well. Indeed. Yes, indeed. Wow. Yes. That's one of my favorite accolades. I really it was that was a thrill. Oh yeah, yeah definitely. Yeah. Now of course, this is part one. Part two will be done sometime in the future, because right now we'll only have about half an hour to 35 minutes it depends but this is going to be all the big stuff the big questions you know that i'm going to be asking um, um might as well get started with it so of right. course jennifer hale yes ma'am do you know frank welker yeah. <laughs> i adore frank welker i've known frank <laughs> welker for let's see let's see oh my gosh almost 30 years i've known frank welker for at least you know 27 years something like that yeah yeah, oh my gosh yeah yeah i uh, so my first animation job in la was in 1994 93 94 i forget well, spider-man yeah no that was uh we're on earth is carmen san diego oh yes God. i literally yeah. said it before oh, That's okay. <laughs> that yeah. was the first one though you, there's no way you'd know that was the first one yeah, yeah well, i did my... look on um wikipedia before and i was like yes that is the first one and then all of a yeah. sudden i just completely forget it but yeah good cast rita marino Mo roger bumpus scott mm -hmm. menville oh my gosh mm -hmm. so yeah Not to mention um, all the guests we had in there and frank was one of those it was i believe frank was in there yeah 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 oh my been, gosh yeah. wow because i remember i remember seeing on twitter i can't remember what session it was for but it was a long time ago i'm gonna to have to find this for when we next speak but it was like i think okay. one of them was like a session for grim and evil yeah it was because gray delia was there yeah. and there was another there was another thing as well i think i can't remember what it would have been but i have it on my phone somewhere but i will find it i will try and find it um but whilst i try and find that i'm gonna ask you jennifer what is i've got to ask i'm sorry to ask this probably everyone's sick of me bringing me up What's your favorite memory of Frank Welker? Oh my gosh. Every single time I see him, just the way I feel when I walk in a room and I know he's in there, my heart gets so happy. And he is one of the most deeply kind people you'll ever meet in your life. And he's insanely talented. Yeah, and he's funny. He's a heck of an impressionist. And he's 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 just a wonderful human being. So yeah, my favorite memory is just walking in the door and seeing that Frank's there. I'm like, Frank! It's just always so good. It's just always makes my heart so happy. No, honestly, I'm like just seeing that picture of you photobombing him at that thing at Cartoon <laughs> we were just talked about earlier. Just yeah, just yeah. <laughs> love the man. Can't yeah. believe it's nearly been a year since I met him. Time really yeah. does fly. Yeah, He's pretty great. Yeah, and speaking of Frank, of course, I've got to mention you're a hex girl. Yeah. Oh my god. I'm gosh. a hex girl. Yes, no, I am. Done. I'm born. Thorn of the Hex Girls. Yep. So what I was love it. it. Like, so oh. was it like sort of like that all coming together with each other? Because of course, like Witches Ghost had a stellar cast. Of course, you had Frank, you had Tim Curry, you had Mary Kay Bergman. I'm pretty <laughs> sure I have a picture on my phone of a 
of the witch's ghost cast together and i'm literally looking for that yeah. and this other one i'm looking for as well so yeah <laughs> that's yeah entirely possible yeah kimberly and jane and i are the uh kimberly brooks jane weedlin and myself are the hex girls and just like every other job you know we auditioned for it and uh we got booked and it's super cool because i used to way back when i was in high school early high school i used to i was singing in a band in garages and clubs and wherever and um, we used to cover the go-go stuff mm -hmm. and um so it was really wild to now be performing with jane weedlin of the go-go's <laughs> it was like oh my god this is so cool i don't think i ever told her that but it was pretty awesome and she's also i mean she's such a brilliant songwriter um and just a great performer so i mean Look, I started singing in clubs, like I said, when I was 15, and that's my first love. So anytime I get to do that makes me super happy. Oh, that's wonderful. Yeah. And of course, yeah. like there was going to be a Hex Girls movie, of course. There was, should be a series. That was... I'm just saying. Yeah, I'm just yeah. saying. Yeah. Yeah. And then Haunted High Rise as well. That was being sort of, you know, worked out and then it got canned. What do you think that would have been like for you to do it with like Kimberly and Jane? Oh, anytime we work together, it's a blast. It's an absolute blast. We've done some stuff in the last few years and it was so much fun. Just so much fun. Yeah. Oh, that's so sweet to hear. Mm -hmm. oh, and um, of course, as some people in the UK may or may not know that you were actually nominated for a BAFTA in 2019, I believe. Or was it? No, no. I completely got that wrong. I'm so sorry. I haven't done my research. It was 2021. I want to say 21. Yeah. 2020. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, it, was, it was completely a shock. Because look, I, you know, to be honest, I've been doing this before we all got awards for it. So, you know, by the time the awards came around, I was no longer a new, a new shiny thing. So to be nominated and to be seen is, is pretty great. I'm, I wasn't super accustomed to that. So it was nice. And, and Rivet was such a great character and Chris Zimmerman directed it. She's one of the best voice directors on the planet. And to be able to do that with her was pretty spectacular. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, I've literally just been speaking to Chris recently, trying to get her on my show, and like, I need to tell her. She's like, I'm so excited to like, you know, because we're planning like a call in advance, just to like, so I can introduce myself to her and just tell her all the stories that I've got. It's just, I'm excited. <laughs> I'm just like, She's so great. You. She's great. I mean, the whole team at Insomniac, everybody over there is just amazing. Yeah. 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 Definitely. Of course. And not only are you a BAFTA nominee, but you also have a Guinness World Record. How Dude. did that sort of come about for you then? It was a complete shock. They didn't actually get in touch with me directly. I found out because somebody reposted something on Twitter um, that I was the apparently the most prolific female video game voice actor on the planet. <laughs> like, cool. Wow. And that's all. That's just like, oh, OK, cool. It feels really good. I'll say that I will say that when games first started being produced with, you know, voice actors really participating in a significant way, yeah. it was way back. And we were used to animation sessions and in an animation session. It's like a radio play or like a conversation yeah. like we're having. Everybody has their sort of turn and they all yeah. kind of take carrying the load of the story and in video yeah. games it's the same length of a session under the contract that we work under which is a four-hour contract um yeah. but you're doing a four-hour one-person show and so you're yeah. on 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 so a lot several of my <laughs> peers were like i'm not doing that and i was like i'll do it i wanted to buy a house i'll do it i'll do it i'll do it because i just like to make sure i kept working and i think honestly that's a huge piece i was joke i have a video uh guinness record because i wanted to buy a house and so <laughs> yeah uh, did you not like getting like any sort of trophy for it or not no no i bought, I bought a copy of the magazine and like put it up on my wall i'm like that's kind of cool <laughs> you don't you don't get a certificate or anything how did they decide that did they go by credits or i know that had... probably by credits yeah i'm sure that's how they did it um steve bloom got the the male version which at the time there was a lot more work for men than women so he has the overall and he's also extraordinary and one of the greatest human beings you'll ever meet. I and agree. For him, he's like family. And um, and so I believe he has a plaque and has all that. Because I, I think that happened around the same time, I want to say. Yeah. Wow, so he's got a plaque, but you don't. At the time, it, dudes were more celebrated than women. This was Someone a should make a plaque for you. I, I think that'd be really lovely. I would never say no. Yeah. Yeah. Put it up in, <laughs> put it up in your recording booth. <laughs> yeah, right? Right? Yeah. yeah I have I a very small collection of things on my wall. There's very few things on my wall, but that magazine is one of them. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. Now, of course, I've got to bring up 
the DC animated universe as well. Of course, you've done mm-hmm. Superman, the animated series, and Batman Beyond and stuff. So what was it like sort of like to work on those? Andrea Romano, Kevin yeah. Conroy, you know, just all these oh. magnificent people. Amazing. They are truly magnificent people. Andrea is... She's the she's one of the OGs. She's extraordinary. Voice directors do not get enough credit, in my opinion, in this business. They make the difference so much of the time, and they're incredible. And to work on that and Justice League and all those, and to have multi, I think on Justice League I had five different characters on the show at one point that I was doing, and it was just so much fun. And then working on like Batman Beyond, you know, the, that whole thing, like yeah. Diedrich is just hysterical, and and working and Gray and I being fire and ice together was a blast because I love that woman. I just love her. Um, And so, yeah, it was just like, I have the voice acting community is a really beautiful group of people. And anytime I get to show up to work with any of them is, (laughs) it's just the best. Yeah. Of course. Yeah. Oh yeah. You, cause you voice Satana in a justice league unlimited list. Little piggy. The, uh, the Kevin Conroy sings episode. Yes. 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 Beautiful episode. I tell you. Yeah. 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 He was a lovely human being. I'm glad to hear that. And of course you did Gotham girls. So like Adrian Barbo and Diane Pershing, who I both had on my uh, podcast. Oh, Um, lovely. I didn't get Arlene. I didn't get Arlene for my show, but you know, we did interact a few times. She, I did a PowerPoint presentation on her for a college exam and, you know, she gave me full permission and she sent me a voicemail and just like, I wish I got her for my show, but you know. Uh, uh, I'm glad you connected with her though. That's cool. Thank you. Did you, did you record Gotham Girls with everybody else or was it solo? We did. We were all together. That was, that was the way it was for so long. And it was only when they really started bringing in more kind of TV personalities and stuff that we sort of started to separate and record more one at a time because scheduling was a bit of a a deal and you know in the last you know 10 years or so that's become more common and now that a lot of us work remotely um we still get to record in groups sometimes um i worked yeah. on um slumberkins i think it was with um oh, we got to do group records on there which was super cool and a few other shows i don't know if i'm allowed to talk about but we did mm-hmm Ah, right. I was thinking, right, just going back to that picture of Frank Welker and like Mary Kay Bergman and stuff, I'm thinking that might have been for Zombie Island. Instead. I think it was for Zombie Island. Might have been, yeah. 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 Might have been. I mean, it's just sort of similar cast members, you know, but then at the same time, you're thinking, you know, I'm just looking through all my pictures and I literally, right. I had it, you know, when you have it, but then like when you need it, you can't find it. Of course, that's the law of pictures. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Oh, I'm just going to make a note here. Right. Uh, Frank, uh, BTS picks, Scooby do. I think the other one might have been for Grim Adventures. I think. Don't count me on that. Could've as could've soon been. as I as soon as I find them, I'll send them to you. <laughs> well, I might show them to you in part two, but who knows? <laughs> there we go. Yeah, yeah. And hmm, actually, yeah. One thing I didn't know up until very recently, because of course it's sort of, you know how you keep sort of like your public life separate to your private life. I hope you don't mind me mentioning this, but you've got a son. I didn't know you had a son. Yep. Wow. So I do. I'm a mom. It's one of the greatest things I've ever done in my life. Yeah. If not the greatest, actually. That's wonderful. Has he ever been to any sessions with you? Has he grown up with your work? When he was little, he might have come one or two times, but I deliberately let him have his own space. I'll never forget taking him to preschool and one of the girls in the preschool, she was his age. I think they were like three or three at the time, maybe four. Her, this little girl's dad was a Powerpuff Girls fan. And every time she saw us, me and my little son, she would look right past my son to me and just want to talk about Powerpuff Girls. And I was like, that's not right. He gets to have his time. He doesn't need everybody looking past him at his mom. So I never even talked about what I did. I never even told him what I did. And he found out by accident at a dinner party one night when he was like seven. (laughs) I didn't hide it, but I just never talked about it. Yeah, yeah, that's totally understandable. Yeah, Yeah, because I wanted him to have his space and he gets to be him. And I don't want him to be overshadowed by a career that can look shiny to to people outside the family. Yeah, 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 of course. I totally understand that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And... Another thing, I didn't realize you were actually in Star Wars, The Rise of yep. Skywalker. 
Uh, how uh, I am live action? Yeah, it was amazing. I have done that came out of way back you know, when we were doing Clone Wars. I um, was Ayla Sakura's voice uh, and uh, Rayo Chuchi. And in The Rise of Skywalker, there's a scene toward the end where Rey is on the floor. She's laid out and it's looking really bad. And all the voices of previous Jedi come back to her to encourage her to get up, you know, to go forward, to keep going. And I got to, I was, uh, yeah, I got to go in and record and JJ Abrams directed me and it was really, we had so much fun. And he was, I ended up doing Cinderella for him and he was just captivated. He thought that was cool. And, you know, it was, it was fun. He's lovely to work with. He's just so easy going and, and so clear about what he wants and really fun and super, super smooth to work with. Yeah, because you were Cinderella as well. You've obviously voiced her a lot of times for the Disney franchise. So Every, everything feel? since like 1995, I've been the voice. Of How Cinderella. do you feel like to be a princess? It's cool. It was. I have to say, the Wreck It Ralph thing was probably the funnest. Even though some people at the traditional character voices found it a little horrifying, I, I found that scene pretty fun. <laughs> I thought it was pretty fun too because I know they like they, they brought back a lot of the uh, original voice actors. Well, obviously yeah. some of them, obviously not like the original original. Obviously. Right, right, yeah, because I'm not the original. Of the course. current, the, the current. current. It yeah, was the voices. first time that red carpet was the first time all the Disney princesses were in one place, and at one point they actually wow. put us all up on a stage together. Everybody was dressed up, and we all did a picture together. And so wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Oh, that sounds so wonderful. Oh, yeah. wow. Um, yeah. And of course, I don't think you'd be able to talk about this considering it comes out in like, I think just over a week. But once upon a studio, of course, you can't confirm or deny that you will be in that. But I've seen people say you will voice Cinderella and stuff, but I'm not obviously going to ask you because of NDAs and the strike. Keeping my, yeah, I can't talk about anything that hasn't been released right now. I can't. Yeah. Yeah. If producers well, haven't gonna... posted it, I don't post it. Mm -hmm. I was going to say, because people say, oh, it's because of the strikes. And I'm like, well, even if the strikes weren't going, they would have NDAs. Yeah, so... yeah we have NDAs. Those are two totally yeah. separate issues. Yeah. Yeah, they're totally separate. Like the strikes, we can't promote as actors. We can't go out and actively market things that are happening right now because that's part of the work that's covered under our contract. Yeah. And if they're not respecting our contract, then we we have to respect that. Yeah. So, yeah. 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 And of course, with the announcement of Totally Spies, turning non-union that really yeah, did pointing because they, they reached out hard. a couple like a year ago and i was like i would love to do this so please you know talk to my agents just like we've done for the last however many seasons and then i never heard from them again and i was and the thing just, is they've done this for loads of shows they've done this for the transformers franchise i don't know specifically why i mean Yes, it's giving non non union actors a chance to work, but at the same time, I can't really comment because I'm not a part of the union. It's completely different over here in the UK. Yeah, yeah, it's different. And the other thing too is, I know a lot of non union actors who would not take the job, like because they don't want to, they don't want to take someone else's job. Like when I've been asked to, even in, under the union contract, I've been asked to audition for roles that I know my friends have. Yeah. And I will always contact that friend first and say, hey, or I'll reach out on social media and go, or I'll ask the director very specifically, what's the story? Why are they not doing it? And if it's about money, I don't, I will not take that role. I will not do it. It's not right. Actually, I was going to ask, because when you voiced Zatanna, she was originally voiced by Julie Brown, who I've had on my show. Did you ever yeah. reach out to her when you got cast as her in Justice League I, Unlimited? I trust Andrea Romano. That's a situation where that is a director of such high stature that if she asks me to do something, I trust her integrity and I, I will go forth on, on that. Yeah. Yeah. I would just do it straight away. No questions asked. I'm just going to go right in. <laughs> well, Andre, part of our strength nice. though is how we take care of each other, right? We have to take, we have to stand yeah. in uni unity. We have to not undercut each other. That's incredibly important because we will all pay the price if we do. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. And Andrea, as you said, she's remarkable. She's magnificent. You know, oh, she's, she's helped me a lot with my demo her. reel. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, too. she's so great. Yeah, she's so great. I know. Yes. Um oh, this is a good topic. Now, Spider Man ninety four. Now, mm. of course, this is like the opposite to like Batman and Superman and stuff, obviously different companies and stuff. So yeah, what, what was it like? Because obviously that was one of your first, along with obviously Carmen San Diego. Yeah, it so how did, how did that go for you? Roles. It was mind blowing. I, I I was still in the. I was like, what? I got another job. This is so cool. 
I just loved the role. I loved that I could just act and it was enough. I mean, it was a different style, right? It was more, more about the acting and less about the high adventure, you know, of like, just the style was a bit different, which was super cool. Our director was super quirky. And um, working on that, I got to meet Stanley. I got to go to Stan's house. I ran into Stan several years later on the sidewalk, you know, like walking down the street. And he remembered me and he stopped and he said hello. And I was like, oh my God, I can't believe he remembers me. And um, yeah, it was, it was amazing. That cast was incredible. Mark Hamill and I, uh, he was, I believe he was Hobgoblin, I want to say. I may have that incorrect, but um, we had a whole story arc together. And I'll never forget at one point, our characters were in a scene together. And Tony, the director, he he wanted to take the scene to another, you know, a different way. And he's like, okay, you two hold hands. So I'm holding hands with Mark doing the scene. You know, it was really sweet. It was very fun. And, and he was just, and this is before he kind of got rediscovered. You know, he was... Yes, he had done Star Wars, but Star Wars back in 94, like, had not had his renaissance. We, I knew him as a super brilliant voice actor, which is what he is. And the Joker, super. of course. Oh, my God. He was a, he is a brilliant voice actor. And that's, that's where he lives in my heart. I'm so happy for his, his kind of renaissance that he's having, too. I think it's very, very well deserved. But he always lives in my heart as a super brilliant voice actor. He will be the only exception to me as a movie star who is actually interested and really good at voice acting. Because you see all these movie stars from animated films and they, they don't give a crap. They, they don't just do it because it's big and they only get billed because it's big names. And they, the film producers want because it's big names. People will see them and they're like, oh, such and such, let's go see that. But no, Mark Hamill, if you put Mark Hamill as a yeah. top villain in, a animated, and it is an, in an animated film, yeah. film people who only go for the big names they'll like that voice actors they will like that it works out completely it works out mark is an asset no matter how you serve him up <laughs> yeah exactly yeah and honestly it has a lot of similarities with batman the animated series being that it's got some shared cast members of course Ephraim zimbalist jr was yes. the rock in it yeah yes. that was a trip i'll never forget one day sitting around with Ephraim zimbalist jr ed asner and Martin Landau, who were all like serious Hollywood actors from their day and who continued to have long careers and just listening to them swap stories, it was just like, it was jaw dropping. I was just sitting there just, just awestruck watching them do their thing and share stories. It was amazing. Did you ever get to meet Christopher Daniel Barnes? Oh, I know Christopher. Yeah, you know him. Yeah, we're friends. Yeah, wow. yeah, I love him. He's great. We did many scenes together. <laughs> he used to just, oh my god, he would just, yeah, he would tease me nonstop. He was so fun. He still does. Oh, yeah, god. he's a good egg. I really like Christopher. Well, I, yeah. I presume that you met him, but I didn't realize you're actually still in touch with him. Like, is there yeah. any? Yeah, I mean, it's been like a god. It was actually probably just probably the last time I saw him in person was pre-pandemic. Um, but yeah, I, I mean, like I could pick up the phone and go, "What are you doing?" And go. I don't know. What are you doing? So we, yeah, you know, that's yeah. me up. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, so thirty years next year. You're thinking, oh my gosh, and all these that's cast members insane. from. That's Wait. insane. That's mind blowing to me. Oh my god, that's so crazy. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Kind of does lead on to that question of you know obviously it's been thirty years and stuff. Is there any cast members that you obviously got to know in the nineties when you were working on shows that you're still in touch with today, even if you haven't worked with them since that time? Oh period? yeah, I mean. David Hayter and I met when he worked on Spider-Man. Ah, yeah. In America, and he's one of my close, one of my best friends. He's one of my dearest friends. He and his wife, they're like family to me. Um, he's one of my favorite humans. I mean, there's so many, because we're all, we're all a community. I mean, talking about, you know, Phil Lamar, like I, I just messaged him a few weeks ago. Like, we all are connected. We all keep in touch. Gray and I, I got to see her a couple weeks ago. It was just... Yeah, we're all still connected. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and honestly, with like this podcast and stuff, you know, like having people on sort of talk about their stories and they bring up like stuff from my show, like, oh, and I see you've had such and such in your show as well. I know that person or I wanted to come on your show because I've seen you've spoken to my friends, such and such. And you think you're just all a massive family. It's 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 amazing, really. Yeah, yeah, yeah it is. It is. Yeah. Really cool. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Is there anything that you can sort of talk about, or again, is it sort of thing by an NDA? Uh, X Men ninety seven. I cannot. I cannot verify the role I'm playing. I can only say that I'm in it, but I'm not going to tell you who I'm playing. I'm not going to tell you mm. anything. 
because well, I said online Jean Grey, but as as Jennifer said, cannot confirm more tonight at this point. Nope, so please, I'm not please saying please anything about that. who anybody's playing, including myself. <laughs> You'd have to wait for the surprise. So it's please. Good. Yeah. disregard that sort of thing but she will be an X-Men 97 there, that's the best that's I can say I can say. I'm <laughs> thrilled to be an X-Men in X-Men 97 oh absolutely yeah yeah, yeah. really fun sessions yeah how yeah. did you get into voiceover we, did you, well, you always wanted to be a voiceover did you you know I you... fell into it I because I I went to a fine arts high school so I learned oh. how to talk I lived down south so I learned how to talk without an accent I had just kind of had an ear for for voices and things like that already um, but I trained and I trained and I trained and that's actually why I started skillshub.life um, so people can have access to the tools that I had coming up and like mentors made a huge difference for me and the way i got mentors was i was working at a video production studio next door to an audio studio mm -hmm. and they asked me to come over and do i think it was a valley girl and i went there i was like oh my god you know and i did the whole thing and i was shocked that they paid me i think i forget if it was 30 or 35 dollars for the session and i was like wait what um and so i talked to greg and courtney and to nancy who worked there and I just kept asking them what I should do next. And I would pay for time. I would like buy time to work on my demo and then ask them, okay, what do I do now? What do I do now? What do I do now? And that's honestly, I started skillshub.life so people could, could have that same access. We have like 83, over 83 coaches, something over 80 coaches who wow. are, they're all su very successful working actors or they're casting directors or their voice directors in the industry. And you can meet with them and ask them exactly what I learned, which is, what do I do now? Okay, what's my next step? And then you go do it. And we have like free workout rooms for members where you can go practice. We have plans that are like step-by-step -step instructions, like do this, okay, now do that, now do that, now do that. And we have all the support you need to check in. And like, that's, it's based on the path that I followed to become mm -hmm. a voice actor. And so that's all I know is like, find mentors who know how to do it, find out how it works and do what they tell you to do. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Very good advice. Very good <laughs> advice, Jennifer. Thank you. So, mm -hmm. of course, I've got to bring up now, big question of, okay, I've kind of just introduced this. I ask like a huge question, sort of round off the interview a little bit, if you know, you kind of get what I mean. Like this is the one that we've been building up to. This is the one okay, that everyone's probably up. been waiting for. So my big question is, Jennifer, what is your favorite vocal technique? And Ooh. what do you recommend it? I recommend- Well, of course you recommend it, but you know. <laughs> All right. Uh, two things. Water, hydration, always, 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 always. Um, and singing techniques. I, I started singing in clubs when I was 15. And in order to not lose my voice on the long and difficult gigs, I went to a classical singing trainer to learn opera, a teacher, to learn opera. And I had no interest in being an opera singer, but I did not want to lose my voice singing loud, crazy rock and roll. Yeah. And it worked and those techniques still serve me today doing you know doing effort sounds doing battle stuff doing long long sessions you know that training was great and yeah that's vocal technique also i will say that you really if you want to do animation and games and the kind of voice acting stuff yeah. definitely learn acting take acting classes and also start to build your awareness of your own emotional library like, cause you're gonna wanna draw on real life experiences. Like, when was I really sad? When was I mad? When was I full of joy? When was I confused? Like you have a whole library of your own life experience to draw from. And it's unique to you, to how you experience emotion and how you express emotion. There's no one right way to do it. There's your way and bring that forth, trust it, have a good time with it. Yeah. Very, very, very good advice. Like I said before, but this one, powerful stuff definitely <laughs> thank you Emma. thank you so jennifer thank you so much for joining me on my podcast and i gotta say it was worth the wait it definitely was thank you amber it was a joy to be here thank you for having me and thank you to everybody out there for watching for listening for playing for just because without you we don't get to do this so thank you yeah yeah definitely yeah. jennifer actually 
where can we find you on the internet is there uh, any, is social yes. media anything you'd like to promote yeah. skills you, can, you can find me at uh, acting.skillshub.life we are skillshub.life um that is a site that i created with my sister and our friend bill you can find me on twitter i am at j hale tweets <laughs> or x whatever they call it now on instagram i am at j hale gram g-r-a-m on TikTok, I am at jhale talk t o k. I don't do a lot over there, but it's there. And uh, Facebook, I think it's official Jennifer Hale. And Skills Hub has just launched a YouTube channel. Oh. And on the YouTube channel, I'm doing a video every week about things voice acting, things voice acting career. And it's just there. It's it's just you know no cost. Just come and check it out. And we're going to put up all kinds of resources on that channel. So subscribe if it's your jam. Yeah, it's wonderful. I'll stick it all in the description down below awesome yeah definitely and there's another thing that i only just found out tonight jennifer where are you going to be in early december with david hater may i ask <laughs> i will be in birmingham at mcm comic-con cannot wait i really want to go i said to myself i'm not going to do any comic cons for the rest of the year because i'm going to california in march so then oh. i've got to try yeah it's com coming out there i'm coming out there long oh my last gosh. That's going to be amazing. I'm excited. Oh, that's so exciting. We'll have to meet. Oh, my God. So, unless, <laughs> that's what I was going to say, because I'm not going to have to try and get down to Birmingham before the end of the year, because I would love to come meet you and David. Like, oh, my gosh. And, like, it's just around the corner from the Hilton I stayed at for TF Nation. Like, people stay there to go to the NEC, so it kind of works out. I can stay there yeah. again. Yeah, there um, you go. You have right. decisions to make. You have decisions hey. to make. Mm -hmm. so if you are in the uk you can go see jennifer at mcm birmingham which is on at the nec the national exhibition center i believe uh from the first to the third of december you're going to be there all three days am i correct indeed you're indeed, going to be there all three days mm -hmm. wonderful mm -hmm. right well i'll get uh tickets uh ticket link down below i'll get all your social media link down below uh, and with that being said thank you to you guys at home for watching this episode of in conversation with atf featuring the lovely jennifer hale we will be back in the the, the future for the future for part two the future <laughs> for part two that's what happens when you do do a lot of vocal techniques before an interview you go <laughs> like that <laughs> thank you so much thanks everybody have a great night all Bye. right, take care, guys. Bye and cut.